bit of a rough landing. What year is it? Uh, 2020. 2020? Okay, uh, before or after the change of currency to chicken nuggies? What? Hello there, my name is Alice and I've been brought here today to read one of my favorite books, Ascendant of a Bookworm by Mia Kazuki. And I've been told I'm going to be using this piece of interesting technology, a cell phone, to do it. How do I use this? The story, Ascendant of a Bookworm, follows a girl named Morano, a book-loving post-secondary student and soon-to-be librarian whose life tragically ends in an earthquake where she gets crushed beneath a pile of books. With her dying breath, she wishes to be reincarnated in a world where she can read books forever. Arano awakens in the body of a weak five-year-old girl named Mine, in a world where books are scarce and only available to elites. Mine, retaining her memories of her previous life, decides to create and print her own books so she can read again. We are reading a segment from that book, Lifestyle Overhaul. If there aren't any books, I'll just have to make them myself. My mood brightened with optimism after I came to that conclusion. But unfortunately, there are no paper in my home. I had confirmed that while searching it for books. In short, I had to go and buy paper. But I didn't know where it was sold. And once again, there were no convenience stores, department stores, supermarkets, or office supply stores in this city. So where is paper sold? Since the older man back at the pawn stand said that each book had to be copied by hand, it was possible that books with blank paper inside were sold somewhere. But where might that be? Maybe there's a store that sold only paper. If I were in Japan, I could buy sheets of loose leaf paper, write notebooks, staple together copy of paper, or do any number of things to quickly make my own makeshift books. But things were not so easy in this world. There's simply no paper at all in my home, so I had to make books. I first had to begin a search for paper. We arrived home from the market as those thoughts spun in my mind, and coincidentally, Thule had just gotten back from the forest. Apparently she had gone to get firewood, nuts, mushrooms, and various herbs to use for seasoning the meat. Hey, Thule, what'd you get? Let me see, let me see. I peered into the basket containing Thule's spoils and soon found one of the things I was looking for. She had gotten several of the off cuddle like fruits I'd found when searching the house earlier. I saw Mom crushing it for oil, so I knew for sure I'd be able to get fruit oil from it. Wow, can I have one of these? Thule thought about my request for a moment. You want a marrow? Okay, you can have a couple, and giving me two of them. Thank you, Thule! I rub my cheek against the marrow while going to the storage room to grab a hammer. I can make shampoo with this. Excited, I brought the hammer down. Slam! The marrow exploded with a heavy squish, spraying juices all over me and Thule, who had followed me to watch. Hey, mine! Why did you do that? Thule, without even wiping the juices off her face, gave me a bright smile with cold eyes. I jerked a little in fear of her blatant anger. Uh-oh. This isn't good. Thule looks really, really mad. Um... Thule, you see, um, well, I wanted the oils, so... That's not how you get the oil from fruit! What's wrong with you? Jeez, I can't help I don't know the proper method. The mind in my memories would always look away whenever Thule tried to teach her. Everything she said ended up so distorted, I couldn't understand it. Mine was apparently jealous, to the point of frustration at Thule, who was healthy and energetic, and capable of doing everything she couldn't. So many of mine's memories were buried in her thoughts of no fair. It made me kind of not like her. I mean, Thule's such a nice older sister. She takes good care of me and teaches me what I did wrong, even when she's mad. I started to clean up the exploded marrow, while Thule complained to me, but before I finished, Mum came back from the well and went red with anger after seeing what a mess the walls were. She doesn't care about how dirty the floors get, but she cares this much about the walls? I later learned that nobody really cared about dirt or soot, but fruit juice would eat at the wood of the walls and hurt them, which is a big deal. After I finished cleaning, I looked between the crushed marrow, Mom, and Thule. I wanted the oil as soon as possible, but I wasn't sure if I should ask Mom or Thule for help. When in doubt, go for whoever is less angry. I stealthily whispered to Thule. Thule, how do I get oil from fruit? Will you teach me? Thule let out a long sigh and called to, out to Mom. Ha! Who knows what she'll do if you don't teach her? Go ahead, said Mum, while pointing at the storage room. I don't think I can be blamed for messing things up I was never taught to do. If mind memories were better, I wouldn't make so many mistakes like this. I followed Thule into the storage room so she could show me. The tools for extracting oil were all in there. The fruits, juices, and oils will seep into the table since it's wood, so you can't just crush it like that. You need to put down this metal stand first. Start by putting cloth over it. 
Then wrap the fruit in the cloth. If you don't, the oil will spray everywhere. But since most of a marrow can be eaten, we usually get the oil from the core after eating the rest. I'll teach you how to extract the oil after we get the seed out. I know I only want to use the seed for oil, but I don't know how much of it I'll need. I can't wait that long. I'll get the oil from the rest of the marrow too. With that declaration made, I wrapped the marrow in the cloth as instructed and started hitting it with the hammer on top of the metal stand. The hammer was so heavy I could barely lift it, but after some hard work, I felt the fruit gradually breaking apart. Wow! Am I maybe amazing? That's a terrible sentence. That is not good English. <laughs> this is how it's done. I squeeze the cloth to get the oil out, twisting it with lots of enthusiasm. A dark stain spread throughout the cloth, but that was all. A single drop of oil dripped through, but there seemed to be exactly no chance of me getting as much oil as I needed. Mine? That's not good enough. Your aim is bad. You're not hitting it hard, and your swinging posture is all wrong. You crush the fruit, but the seed's definitely not broken at all. Listen, I do have a complaint to the sister. You can't just tell her what to do and then complain about her posture being terrible. You have to teach her correctly. That's how you do it with small children. The sister getting mad at that is not a good example of being a good sibling. Don't do that. Oh, Tuli, I did my best, but it wasn't good enough. I looked at Tuli for help. And she took the hammer away from me after sighing in exasperation. She tightened her grip around it and lifted it up high. Slam! Slam! With each heavy thud, the fruit and seed were crushed much faster and more thoroughly than when I hit them. Dad can use juicing weights to get lots of oil without using a hammer, but they're too heavy for us. So we have to break up the fruit bit by bit like this. Once the seed's completely crushed, you just squeeze the cloth like this and... The cloth had only gotten damp for me. But once Thule started squeezing, oil dripped steadily out of it into the small bowl below. I felt my respect for Thule grow three sizes as I watched the oil build up. Wow! Thule, you're amazing! Thank you! Remember to clean up once you've done mine. Come on, clean up. I mean, I don't know what you mean by clean up here. After seeing my kind of flounder and confusion, Thule shook her head and started showing me how. She really does like taking care of people. I thought to myself while putting the tools away. Once I was done cleaning up, I peered into the bowl of thick white oil and inhaled deeply. The stronger the scent, the better it would be for shampoo. Hey Tuli, can I have some herbs too? Whatever smells the best. Just a little, okay? Okay! With Tuli's permission, I took out some of the herbs from her basket and sniffed them one by one, picking the best ones and crushing them between my fingers over the bowl. If I could get the scent into the oil, the shampoo would probably end up smelling great. Once the smell carries over, I'll add a little salt. I started to think about how to best make the shampoo, when I noticed Tuli suddenly take the bowl of oil and start carrying it over to Mum, who was making dinner. Tuli, no don't! What are you doing? I hurriedly snatched the bowl of oil away from her and squatted down, holding it close to my stomach protectively. Tuli, seeing that, put her hands on her hips. She's clearly angry. It'll be ruined if we don't eat it soon, right? The oil will taste nasty if too much herb smell gets into it. You can't eat this! I'm going to make shampoo with it. I won't let anyone eat it. No matter what Tuli said, I had no intention of giving up my one shot of making shampoo. I had suffered with dirty hair long enough. Mine? Tuli went out and gathered those herself. Don't be selfish. Mom got mad alongside Tuli. But I hadn't gotten her permission for both the Merrill and the herbs, so they were mine. They weren't hers anymore. They were mine. I'm not being selfish. She gave them to me. I shook my head and prepared to defend the oil to the death. My head was so itchy I couldn't bear it any longer. I wanted a way to make shampoo, and the way was right in front of me. Nothing would get in between it and me. As if sensing that I wasn't going to give it up, no matter what, both of them sighed in exasperation and turned around. I inhaled deeply at the relief of having protected my oil and mixed a pinch of salt into it. With that, the shampoo substitute I had made with my old mom when she was getting addicted to natural living was complete. Mom, can I have some hot water? I laid out a waterproof cloth, usually used for when bathing, and put the bowl of oil onto it before bringing a bucket to mom. I had been asking for some hot water she had made with dinner each day, so she nodded and filled the bucket, which I then put on top of the waterproof cloth as well. I reached out, ready to start washing, but stopped at the last moment. Mm, I guess I'll try diluting it first. My only choice was to dilute the shampoo until leaving some of it in my hair wouldn't be an issue. I haphazardously poured the complex faux shampoo into the bucket and stirred it up. Mine? What are you doing? Uh, washing my hair? Tuli looked completely baffled. But given how I hadn't seen any of them use shampoo once I got here, 
I assumed that shampooing one's hair wasn't really a thing in this world. And thus, she wouldn't understand no matter what I said. Instead, I would just show her what I'm doing. Seeing is relieving. I pulled my hairpin out, dipped my hand into the bucket, and began cleaning. I rubbed my hair within the water and repeatedly splashed the water onto my head so that it wouldn't get all the way to the root of my hair. Then, I began gently massaging my head. My hands were weak and my arms were short, which made it difficult. But even so, I repeated the motions until I was satisfied, before squeezing my hair and wiping my head with a flimsy cloth that was a towel, in name only. After wiping my head several times to get as much shampoo off as possible, I ran a comb through my hair. My hair had gotten almost black with filth, but now it's closer to its original color of dark blue. Wow, this is actually looking pretty good. I ran my fingers through my hair and sniffed. It smells slightly of jasmine. My life had recently involved living in the midst of body odor, reeking of sweat and mud. The mere act of smelling something other than my own stink made me little happy. Mission success. What? <laughs> Mine, your hair's all pretty and dark and blue now. It's like the night sky. And your eyes are like moons. Hmm. I guess my eyes are gold or yellow then. Now knowing the color of my eyes, I looked at Tuli's blue ones and briefly thought about hereditary genetics before deciding it would be a fruitless waste of time. Mine? What is this? Mmm, it's simple. Simple all-in-one shampoo. Do you want to try it too? There's enough for both of us. I noticed Tuli's curious gaze and gestured her over to the bucket. We both slept in the same bed, and it would be better if we were both clean. Plus, her pretty face was wasted underneath all that dirt. I wanted Tuli to be clean and maybe this would encourage her to make more shampoo for us. You're the one who gathered the marrow and the herbs, Tuli, so don't worry. You even squeezed out the oil for me. Tuli gave a bright smile at my urging and began undoing her braid. She must have been watching me the whole time, as she immediately dunked her head in the bucket and began washing it just like I did. Ah, oh, she's missing a spot. I stuck a hand into the bucket and scooped up some hot water to put on a hard-to-reach spot of Tuli's head. Tuli, I think that'd be enough. I handed her the rag and she wiped her head repeatedly before running a comb through her hair, just like I had done. Her green hair had gotten super silky, it rippled down in a natural wave that looked like it had been styled, and the light made an angel's halo on top of her head. Basically, her cuteness had multiplied in an instant. Wow, your hair's super pretty now, and you smell nice. Tootley kept combing her hair. We didn't have enough for me to wash her hair every day but maybe it would now be my duty to wash her hair every few days and keep it clean. I had started to clean everything up since we were both done, but mum rushed forward and said stop right there and started using it herself. At this rate, I guess mum and Tuli wouldn't mind me taking some marrows to make some shampoo with. My goal is to keep my family clean. I fell asleep satisfied at how not itchy my head felt. Ever since coming here, the first thing I saw after waking up each day was a spider web. I had gotten myself clean and next I wanted my surroundings to be clean, but despite getting all pumped up about cleaning my room, it was too much for me. The best I could do with my teeny weak body was attempt to clean my own bed. Since Dad had taken the day off, I asked him to dry my blanket on the window. Dad, once the blanket's dry, can you clean up that spider web? The spider web? What's the big deal? He was so used to spider webs that he didn't even consider them dirty. After a bit of hot thought, I squeezed Dad's pant leg. It's scary. That wasn't a lie. If I ever woke up to that spider hanging right in front of my face, I would scream so hard, all those presents would have likened it to the sound of a mineral Basque love. What is a Basque love? Just thinking about it scared me. The sooner that dangerous web was gone, the better. You're afraid of spiders, mine. Alright then, let Papa take care of it. Yay! Thanks, Dad. I'd be really happy if you cleaned around it too. Yeah, yeah. You just want all the spooky spiders out, right? Leave it to me. Okay, ceiling done. Dad brushing the ceiling down took one obstacle I really had no chance of dealing with myself, which meant that from now on, I just had to do what I could, where I could, bit by bit. Mom, where's the broom? Right here. Why, did you spill something? I want to clean our room. Okay, if that's what you want to do, feel free. I gripped the broom and started sweeping it across the bedroom floor. Dust puffed into the air. As someone who grew up in a culture where nobody wore shoes inside, it was baffling to see a bedroom floor so dirty the filth was visible. I really wanted to sleep in a clean bedroom, no matter what it took. I kept sweeping the broom back and forth, pushing a growing mound of dust forward. The sweeping itself wasn't a big issue, since our home barely had anything in it. Mm, I really need to get stronger. Just sweeping a little was enough to make my head feel dizzy. 
It gave up on cleaning for the moment and took a break. At this rate, who could say how long it would take until I could live in a clean home? Now in our mind, why clean the bedroom if you're going to leave a pile of filth in the kitchen? You need to sweep it out the front. Mine, you look sick. Mom peered into the bedroom after seeing the pile of filth I had swept into the kitchen and sighed. She then put me into bed and took the blanket out of the window to cover me with it. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but you need rest right now. If it's just going to get dirty again, why worry about cleaning it now? Mom, that's exactly why I need to clean it right now. I need to stop it from building up. But despite my best determination, my body just couldn't keep it up. I was stuck lazily cleaning up what little I could do each day. I rolled to the side of my bed and touched my hair after it flowed down in front of my face. Well, now that my hair's clean, I need to focus on finding paper. That was my favorite chapter, specifically chapter five. I like it so much because instead of focusing the character on her interest of books, we get a little bit more of her mindset and her adherence to cleanliness and how it contradicts the laws of the world she's currently in, but she's still building up something new and it kind of sets the pace for what she's going to do for the rest of the book. Set this down right here. And I would like to thank our friends at Karunakakon for having me, and I'd like to thank you for being here with me. And I'd love to stay longer, but I think I am actually running late for a very important date, so I must be on my way. Please join us next time if we decide to do something like this again. Goodbye! I will just say right now, um, an oil mixture with a little bit of herbs and some salt won't actually clean your hair? You need something to break down the oils? So her hair just would have been super greasy and gross. I ripped the broom and started sweeping it across the bedroom floor. Dust? Wait, do they have wood floors? All those present would have sounded... Let's try that again. Lichen. See? Lichen. It's not right. Lichen. It's not lichen. It's lichened. E-D at the end. Plural. Not plural. Past tense. Like, it would have smelled better, but it wouldn't have done anything. You need, like, some type of lye or some type of chemical component to break down the oils and it's just mm, maybe I'll just try diluting it first oh that sounded snooty <laughs> like it was just so down to earth to really build up her own character I didn't have an accent at all that whole time incorrect not right not right but I was thinking that it's um, a book and it's a very fictional book and you don't go to fictional books Looking for facts. I don't think. Oh man. All right then. Let Popo take care of it. Can you say that with a straight face, though? Can I say it with a straight face? Those presents would have likened it to the sound of a mineral Basque love. What is a Basque love? What is a Basque love? This factual fictional book. I sure can build a spaceship using this book. <laughs> I'm like, where are you with the script? There is no script! <laughs> Only speaking. This is what it shows your Basque cloak. <laughs> what is- what is that? <laughs> what is that? This is a super secret plug because we have like a minute and 30 seconds left for recording on this camera. But if you enjoyed me reading that book, you can actually hear more. I do a podcast called Poorly Explained. We update every fortnight on Monday and I have a friend who does it with me. He's super great. So join us for Poorly Explained every fortnight on Tuesday. Nope, Monday. I'll get it eventually. <laughs>